Hey guys, how are you? So many people, especially mobile app entrepreneurs, they approach me and they ask me, what's the right way to write your mobile app description? Because there's some considerations for ASO, which, which you know is the App Store Search Optimization, but also it's for humans, right? It's for people, because people will read your description, or, or do, they, do they read the description? We'll talk about it. Um, and uh, so it's kind of like you have to satisfy the search algorithms of the app stores, Apple or Android, and of course, you know, you gotta satisfy the actual potential users. You gotta in, like excite them, get them interested and excited, right? Okay. So first thing is first, we, we gotta talk about search a little bit, right? You probably already know about keyword research and blah blah blah. If you don't, I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. In the description of the video, I'll have, I'll have a link to my SEO ASO keyword research so that you can become a pro at this kind of things when it's as related to apps. Um, it's good, like it, it will get you pretty far, you'll, you'll understand this, you'll understand the lay of the land. But I think probably if you're watching this video, you kind of have a sense of it already. Um, if you don't, check the description of the video for, the, for my other videos on these topics. So, so there's the keywords you probably chose, right? So what a lot of, the simple mistake you can make and you can easily avoid is don't write a short description. Write a long description. I mean, do like seven to a thousand, seven hundred to a thousand words. It's a little. That's a little hefty. But in this description, you'll be able to mention your keywords many times without spamming, and you'll be able to have like eloquent sentences. So you don't have to stuff unnaturally stuff your keywords so that the sentences appear a little bit awkward. Because if your sentences appear awkward, then the people who read them are going to kind of like get turned off, right? So. You're gonna have, and you're gonna have a lot of parag a few paragraphs. I think 700 words or a thousand words. Maybe it's like five paragraphs or six or seven paragraphs. You're gonna have a lot of area where you're gonna get people excited and, and curious about the app. Because because that's remember, people have to read it, right? And for people, they have to become uh, curious, right? They have to become curious enough and interested enough. To click that install button right there, right? That that's really your job, because you know it's like they're gonna that's they're gonna read it. They're gonna look at a few of your reviews, maybe the photos of the, the screenshots, and then you know they're gonna they, that's the decision, right? So the description goes a long way, especially if your app is something serious that you know like teenagers and kids. If it's for kids and teenagers, they don't read a lot, but if the app is something like a utility or something for business, they they people will read a little bit more. Generally, um, the app store or app mobile app users are on the young side. So generally, if they're on the young side, they read a little less. Not, not, not making a blanket, I mean, I am making a blanket statement, but this is like re research shows. I'm not, make, I'm not like judging, right? The research shows, um, empir a lot of empirical evidence shows. Um, so uh, that's, that's a big issue there, right? So people don't read a lot, but but the ones that do, um, they're probably going to also be your more engaged users at times, right? Because they actually care. They, they have more invested into getting the right app and things like that. And they, if they read it, they'll, they'll be more likely to use it because it ended up being the right kind of an app for them. Anyway, so just to recap, by the way, before I recap, uh, what you also want to do is have um, in the bottom, have your support email, your privacy policy, um, and your contact all and general contact page all and maybe your website as well URL um, all in, in the bottom why because your privacy policy um, builds trust if you provide your support email people might use that to email you for help rather than give you a bad review if they have a trouble if they have if they have problems with your app so having a support email actually is going to help you um, avoid some bad reviews and it also will give you more credibility because because there's a person on the other end that people will know, especially if your app is a paid app. Um, and you know you want to also have the about us page. And the about us page also is something that's going to build credibility. Um, what you also want to do is see the consumer will have one question in mind: Is this going to be good for me? Am I going to get a lot of benefit from this app? Because I'm going to, even if I don't spend money, I'm going to spend time at least, right? And what you've got to do is answer that in your 
description. Make sure you convey in many, many ways that this is a great app, it's going to solve this and this and this, or it's going to entertain in this and this and this way, it's going to this unique in this and this way, and you put your heart and soul into it, blah, blah, blah. Basically, um, by the time the person stops reading your description, they have to sort of feel confident that they're going to be getting a good deal, even if they don't pay for the app, in terms of the time they spent. Okay. And this is really one of your main, main, main uh, build trust and make sure that the person thinks that they're going to get value. Okay. And that's what you got to accomplish in your description and then you'll be good. And by the way, uh, you know, if you've seen my other videos, I have a whole book and a whole course on just on how to create a successful mobile app business. This isn't how to create the app itself. It's how to create the business out of your app. And in the book and course, um, and by the way, the book and course, they have largely overlapping information. It's just some people like to consume the course as video and the book is text. So if you like to read, you can get the book. If you like, the, you know, you, you can get it on your Kindle and stuff like that. If you like to watch video, then you get the course. Um, and they really explain like a lot of marketing strategies, the book and course, a lot of monetization strategies, business model and planning, how to, you know, um, and really just the business of it, right? Like the nuances, things you don't know before you start and things that you should know before you start and things that you're gonna kind of like run into once you start so you better know them before so you can pre-plan. So a lot of those things that make a business rather than a hopeful thing that you're doing and a trinket or some people use and throw away, um, you know, so really that's a huge difference, right? So one is a serious venture that make, will make you money, another one will be in many cases like a failed project. and. So really, that's what I kind of try to do in the book and courses to make sure that you get the right information so that you're solid in your planning and your execution and strategies.